Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Greck, and on today's episode, it's time to install a CB radio into my Jeep Gladiator. So I need to find a way to mount this antenna. I think it's going to mount right about there, pick up one of the cowl bolts, and I need to figure out where I'm going to mount the CB inside, run the wires to it, get this antenna wired up, and get it all said and done. So if you're interested to learn more about the whys of a CB radio and how I'm going to install it, stick around. I'll get into all the details right now. So when it comes to communication and radios inside your Overland vehicle, I'm definitely a less is more person. And I do want to say from the outset too, I am not an expert. I don't have a ham radio license. I've actually never had a CB radio in a vehicle before. So please don't think that I'm an expert. A lot of this video is just my opinion and what's going to work for me. And if you're interested, I did a whole video on communication in the past. And the reason that I've never had one before is because of what I call the Ghostbusters problem. And that is, who are you gonna call? So when you're in the Congo, when you're in Nigeria, there is no search and rescue. There aren't other people getting around with CB radios. So you can't call for help if you get stranded, if you have a medical emergency. Really, there's no one on the other end. Even if you could magically get a hold of your embassy, they don't have a vehicle sitting around. They're not gonna come and rescue you. They're gonna say, great, get yourself to the embassy, which is inside the capital city, and then they'll help you get a new passport or they'll help you book a flight home or whatever it is that you need. But if you're out in the middle of nowhere, your CB radio, it's not actually gonna help you when you're in the Congo. And that's why I haven't had one in the past. Of course, a lot of things are different here in Australia and a CB radio makes an enormous amount of sense. So all of the truck drivers here in Australia use CB radios, pretty much all the four wheel drive guys have them. And in fact, it's actually the law for some of the desert segments that I wanna drive through the Simpson Desert, I think the Canning Stock Route, you actually have to have a CB radio before you will even get your permit to be allowed to drive those routes. So in Australia, obviously there is search and rescue. There are other people that have very capable four wheel drives and there are people that can come and help you if you need it. And of course, a CB is just fun too. You can hear about road conditions, you can get weather reports, you can just stay in touch with other people who could be relatively close or even 100 miles away from you, but you'll be able to get that confirmation and that information because of course there are other people around exploring. So all of that said, I have to have a CB radio partially for law, partially because it makes sense. So that's what I'm doing today, installing one because I have to. And the unit that I've got here, this is by a company called ICOM. And I'll be blatantly honest with you, I don't know much about CB radios. The reason I chose this one actually is because way back when I was a teenager, the first job that I ever had was with our next door neighbors when I was growing up. And Rob and Kerry, Rob, the owner of the company, he has a small electronics company where we would repair televisions, we'd install radios and stereos into cars, wire up big antenna systems for like firefighting authorities, anything to do kind of with wiring or electronics or radios, that was Rob's business. And I worked for him, I was kind of like his assistant or I was like the work experience kid. And that's how I got my start in 12 volt wiring and working on cars and stuff like that. And so anyway, I haven't seen them in quite a few years, but I reached out to them and of course, they're still doing great and they have their business. And Rob recommended this radio. He said, best bang for your buck, best transmitting power. Uh, and this thing is an 80 channel radio. So I guess here in Australia, radios used to be 40 channel. Now they've kind of split all the channels in half and now they're 80 channel. And so apparently this is the way to go. Rob supplied the radio and then of course an antenna as well. I don't know anything about what is the gain of the antenna or its specs. Again, I'm not an expert. Rob said it's the one to use. It's the best for what I'm doing. Done, I trust his expertise. And that's what I do often. I just simply rely on other people's expertise. So that's what I have to do today. Mount the antenna. I think it'll go on the cowl. And then the next step is trying to figure out where to mount the CB in the cabin of the Jeep. And happily, wiring is gonna be really simple. I think I can scout the antenna wire just under the windshield frame and get it through into the passenger area. And for the 12 volts, I can use another one of the auxiliary switches that Jeep have provided. 
those things are hanging out right where the passenger front feet are and I've got all the positive wires right there. I can pick up an earth off the frame somewhere. So wiring this thing shouldn't be a problem at all. It'll be really straightforward. It's just a matter of deciding where do I actually want to put it. So mounting the antenna, one of the most common spots to put it on the Jeep is right here at the front corner of the cowl. And there's a mounting bolt here to hold on this little corner piece and tons of companies make a bracket. It's just a right angle thing that basically picks up the antenna so it will sit right about there. And I'm still waiting on that bracket to arrive. So for now, I think I'm just gonna bash something out of aluminium good enough just to hold it there so I can get the wiring links and things like that. And while I'm working on it too, the top part of this antenna actually just threads off. So I'll work on this base piece, but I don't have to worry about the big long piece. And while I'm here in this corner too, once I've got that in position, more or less, I can get the wiring through. And a little trick that I've just learned, last time I used the bung that was down like right near the passenger's feet, but it turns out I can get wiring right through here. So this is the very bottom corner of the windshield and there's already a wiring loom going through. And so I move this little rubber block out of the way and I'll be able to wriggle the wire through and then it pops out in the passenger compartment kind of behind a piece of plastic trim that I can take off and I'll be able to run this wire down until it's at the passenger's feet. So I'll have the antenna wire and I'll have power at the passenger's feet. Now I need to decide where am I gonna put the actual CB radio. So when I think about where to mount this radio, a big part of this comes down to personal preference and how much you think you're going to be using your radio. As I said, I'm not one of those guys who drives along every five minutes and wants to use the CB radio. I think nine days out of 10, I'm actually gonna have it turned off. I'm not even gonna be listening to any radio chatter. It's just not something I wanna do. When I think about my previous trips, you know, when I was crossing the Congo or when I was in Guatemala, part of the reason I do these trips is because I love to be in the wilderness. I love to be remote. I love to get away from civilization and all this nonsense here that we've got. And so to me, having a radio that can just squelch out at me whenever it wants to and kind of interrupt my nice peacefulness, that's not actually what I want. So I think for me, I'm gonna actually have it turned off most days. So what that means is I don't really wanna have it like in my face or really in the cabin. You know, so I know a lot of people would choose to mount their radio up here somewhere. So it's like really easily accessible. And again, if you were planning to use it really often, yeah, maybe that's a good spot for you. Lots of people too would put it inside the center console here. And it does actually fit inside this center console. I could make it work. Obviously then it's out of sight, out of mind when I close the console, which is really nice. One thing that I don't love about it is I'm still really on the fence with this vehicle. I've never owned a new vehicle before. And so it's a little bit intimidating just to be drilling holes in things that are so permanent. The current plan is that I will sell it as soon as the Australia trip is finished. And so I don't really wanna be drilling holes in the console or in really obvious places. I prefer to mount things to existing bolts or existing brackets if I possibly can. So to just punch big holes in the console, yeah, it's an option. I also really like having the console for other things though. So this sort of takes up a lot of space that I would rather save for other things. So then that really leaves, I'm looking at the passenger side. Uh, it really leaves down low near the passenger's feet or one other option that I'm looking at. I'll show you that now with the GoPro. It's really hard to get my big camera in there. So now here I am over on the passenger side and you can see actually I've already started, I dug out, these are the wires that go to the four switches that are on the dash. And so I've already figured out this is the one that I wanna use. This will be auxiliary switch number three and I can pick up an earth, there's a good wire to grab there. But there's kind of a couple of places here that I could mount the radio. And the first one, which I think is really common in the radio world, is something like this, kind of on the side of the console here. Uh, and there's a couple of bolts I could pick up. This one over here that holds the carpet in actually would probably be the best. So I could probably, difficult to do with one hand, I could probably mount it about there somewhere. And so you can see what it looks like. It's pretty close down to the passenger's feet right down there. And would it work? Yeah, can I see the screen from the driver's seat? Not super easily. The other thing I really don't like about it is I really, I'm still ingrained from my Pan American trip, from my Africa trip. I don't want my vehicle to look like bling. I don't want people to look through the windows and see 
oh look, here's a fancy CB radio. If we smash this window, we can grab that and maybe we'll find some other stuff to grab while we're in there. I much prefer to keep everything out of sight and not potentially, you know, encouraging someone to smash a window and steal stuff. So that's a really big consideration when I'm mounting things on or in my vehicle. Keep it out of sight, keep it looking as stock as possible. So for me, this spot down here, it kind of is a negative because I think the passenger is gonna inevitably end up kicking it a little bit with their feet every time they get in and out. I mean, it's kind of inevitable. And this is a Jeep, you're gonna have muddy feet. It's gonna be wet and damp in here. I don't think it's great and you can see it. I don't love that idea. So the final place that I've pretty much decided on, why don't I put it in the glove box? So the glove box on Wranglers and Gladiators are still really, really tiny. You can see this thing only just fits. But if I mount it there to the back wall of the glove box, just like that, it does take up most of the glove box, which is a disappointment. But I really like when I close the glove box now, the entire thing is out of sight, out of mind. You can't see any of the wiring other than the antenna on the hood. You won't even know that I have a CB radio. You certainly won't know where it is. So I think that's a huge plus. And like I said too, nine days out of 10, I'm not even gonna have this thing turned on. So I certainly don't want it in my way, you know, to be kicking it or just sort of have that wire dangling around in my face. That's the last thing I want for my vehicle. So for me right now, it's like I don't even have a CB radio, which actually is a bonus in my world for what I'm doing. So I really am starting to lean towards it. I think the cable is long enough to reach over to me in the driver's seat. It'll get a little bit stretched out, but it does have this curly wire on it. So I think it's designed for that. And probably the biggest downside I think is that I'll have to drive along with the glove box open when I'm actively using the radio. So if I'm in the Simpson desert, I'm doing whatever crossing, if I'm actively in a conversation with someone or I really wanna to listen to what's going on, I'll probably have to drive with the glove box open. And so I've been trying to see what will that be like for the passenger. The seat's all the way back at the moment and I'm six foot two, but this is what it looks like for me with my knees. The glove box is actually touching my knees, which is not ideal. But again, if there's a passenger here, they can be the one using the radio and then it's right here, they can see the screen. And again, it's not a bad thing, I think, that it's sort of inconvenient because that'll encourage us to put it away. Like, why do we even wanna have this piece of digital electronics out and being used all the time? I much prefer to be like, yeah, this is kind of annoying to use. Let's turn it off and put it away and just enjoy the fact that we're out in the Simpson desert, not try to say, hey, let's try to talk to people who are really far away and see what they're up to. That's the last reason that I wanna to go to the Simpson desert. So for all of those reasons combined, I've settled on the idea of putting it in the cock box. And I've just been looking, as I said, the wiring is gonna be super straightforward because I have positive and negative 12 volts right down there. And I should be able to run the wire through from the antenna without too much difficulty. And there's tons of room up behind the glove box where I can tuck the excess wire and kind of zip tie it out of the way where it won't get into trouble. So I'm gonna pull the glove box out. I'm gonna start mounting the bracket for the radio to the glove box. And I need to get the antenna mounted as well. I'll probably just make a bracket for now. And that's where I'm at. That's what I have to do today. So no more preamble. Let's get stuck into it. Dad just came out to help for a bit and we've got the CB mounted inside the glove box. And so it was a little bit finicky to get the bracket mounted in and then get the radio attached to the bracket. And we tried to do it that way first and we couldn't get to the screws that are on each side of the bracket. So we ended up taking it all apart. We mounted the radio to the bracket first, got those screws nice and tight, and then putting a little bit of tape on some spanners, we were able to get those in and do up these four bolts here that I've got holding the bracket to the glove box. And these bolts are probably overkill. They're like quarter inch 
The reason I use them though is because they're stainless. I bought them for some other project and because they have nylock nuts on the inside. And so these things will not rattle loose, which is great. So I also drilled a hole in the bottom corner of the glove box. This is where the power cable and the antenna cable will come out. And I looked three or four times and checked for interference. Over in this corner, it seems like when the glove box is closed, these aren't gonna interfere with anything. And I'll put all of the wires inside that spaghetti tubing as well, just because when you're opening and closing the glove box, there's probably gonna be a bit of friction and attempted a bit of rubbing. And I just wanna make sure that those cables are protected from rubbing. So now it's just a bit of a game. I have to kind of have this over in the Jeep, push the cables through that hole, get them connected, and then sort of close the whole thing up. Okay, so I have the radio fully installed in the glove box. I really like how solid it is, it's mounted well. And obviously here's the microphone. So, you know, sitting here in the passenger seat, it's really easy to use. It is a stretch over to the driver's seat. It works and, you know, compromises pros and cons no matter which way you do it. So that's all really nice. And of course, the bit I love the most, close the glove box, it's like I don't even have a radio. So that's great. And so now it's just a matter of wiring it up. So the wires have gone out the back of the glove box and so I've just got a positive and negative to wire up. And down here is where Jeep provides the wires to the switches. So down here, I've got four to choose from. I just looked in the manual and figured out which one I need. So I just need to connect the positive to that and then that'll turn on when I hit auxiliary three on the dashboard. And for a negative, I peeled the carpet back here and I just found a bolt that goes straight into the body. And I checked it with my multimeter, it is a good earth. So I do wind up with 12 volts between there and uh, the positive from auxiliary three when I check it with the multimeter. So that's where I'll put the earth wire. And then it's just a matter of the rest of this cable and the antenna cable as well. I'll bunch it all up and I'll zip tie it way up behind so that it won't get tangled up in the passenger's footwell. So after that, it's just a matter of testing it, make sure it all works and that'll be the install complete. All right, so I just finished up the wiring. I tucked it all up out of the way and everything's good to go. And so I turned on everything and it works just like I think it should. My auxiliary three button on the dash turns it on or turns it off. And I just played around. You can set up those aug switches so that they will only be on when the ignition's on. Or if I want, it can be on just battery and then the switch can just turn it on and off. So I can use this thing with the ignition on or with the ignition off, that's up to me. And so the final thing to do was I did just put out a call here in Australia, channel 40 is the usual kind of driving roads channel. And I just asked for a radio check and I came back yep, loud and clear. So apparently everything's working just fine. Uh, so I'm really happy. Little added bonus too, because of where I mounted it, I can actually use it right here standing outside the passenger door. So I guess I never thought about that, but it's kind of a nice option. And uh, in terms of finishing it off, Dad and I just made the temporary bracket that's holding the antenna right now. It looks pretty crummy, but there's a new one on the way in the mail. So when that arrives, I'll just swap that out. But otherwise, that's the install of the CB radio done. So now I'm all legal to drive into the sand dunes, to drive the Simpson Desert or any of those routes where having a radio is actually mandatory. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, the build of my Gladiator is really coming together now. There are a few key components that I'm still waiting on. So in the meantime, I'm just trying to finish off as much other stuff as I can. And so lots more updates coming. New videos come out every Monday and Thursday. And as always, a huge thanks to my supporters on Patreon who are helping bring all of this content to life. They help me buy cameras. They help me get this content out to you guys, show you what I'm doing with the build. And of course, I'm gonna document the whole adventure as well and bring you along for every step of the way as I explore all the remote corners of Australia. And who knows, maybe I'll chat to you out there on the radio. So until next time, stay safe and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.